today we are going to feed King Browns. Oh, look at that. And Tiger Snakes. Oh, it's danger, danger. See what I mean about King Browns biting anything and everything. G'day everyone, welcome back to Venom Dyes. We have got so much going on today. It's a smack bang in the middle of school holidays. Process and Venom, we're cleaning snakes. And so our park director, Tim, I have his young fella right here, Matty. Matty, YouTube, YouTube. Matty, I call you Matty Wildman. All right, so how old are you now? I'm 13. 13. Matty has literally grown up here at the park. He spends his weekends here, school holidays. Um, so he jumps in, whether it's the kiosk, reptiles, maintenance, mammals. Um, today he's in Venom and he's learning Venom vials. I'm going to inspect these, mate. They're looking pretty good, I must admit. So we are pretty psycho about how tight we want that film across the, the top of the glass there because it needs to be nice and tight like it's representing skin. Um, so they look pretty good, mate, I must admit. How many of these do you do? Uh, probably like half of them. Yeah, you've done most of them. Most of them? No, pretty good. And these King Browns as well. All right. So. Maddie today is going to, he wants to know like the feeding schedule in here. And I know you guys have been asking me lots of questions about when do we feed the snakes? How do we feed them? What do we feed them? All that exciting stuff. So we are going to feed King Browns and Tiger snakes. So you want to follow me. Um, Maddie, Maddie's got snakes at home. So he's got a couple of pythons. You've got one of the pythons, eh? Yeah, one yeah. is. So it wouldn't be as extreme feeding them because they're non venomous. How big are they now? Still only around that mark, yeah, not yeah. massive. Do you use forceps or do you just use your hand? Forceps. Forceps, good man. I get pretty so, hungry. <laughs> we've got, have you got ones this big or smaller? Smaller. Smaller, yeah. So with the smaller pythons, you can get away with the smaller ones because if they get a hold of you, it's not the end of the world. It's a little python, it's you know, a couple of teeth. It's, not, it's character building, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But these things, different story, all right? King Brown, you don't want them feeding on your hand or a tiger snake. So we use the longer forceps um, and we feed rodents all right so um i thaw them out in this back room so the scent's not sort of running through the main collection here because otherwise if i'm in there cleaning or milking they can get extra you know snakes get real foodie and that can be dangerous so um i thaw them out at the back here look if you're squeamish look away we get in they're, they're already dead they're frozen um we pull them out of the freezer thaw them out and give them a wiggle snake thinks it's a real snake a oh, real rat sorry and smacko so, we'll do King Browns first. Um, so, they are eating what we call a large rat. All right. It's really important with reptiles, their body temperature needs to be a certain temp for them to be able to eat, eat like digest food and even have the energy to think about going for a hunt. So, we give different size rodents depending on the size of the snake. So, these guys will happily eat a large rat. Look, oh, look at that. See what I mean about King Brown's biting anything and everything. Look at that. There's venom right there on the enclosure where he bit. Straight away. Boom, injected venom. And look, he's just dragging it away. Imagine that was your hand. You have heard me say before in the past about perfect example. He literally bit the cage thinking there was food there. All right. Danger, danger. So what I generally do is I just sort of... So the snake, there's a bit of food here, and he will generally, sometimes they'll hang back a little bit, they won't come flying out straight away. Um, but here he, oh, look at that. So he's just grabbed it, smashed it. He's envenomating that like he's just caught himself a rodent in the bush. Right, so he's just pumping the venom in. He thinks it's alive. Venom acts as like three things. So it's used for defense. It's used for securing prey, like he's doing at the moment, and it also aids in digestion, right? So the feeding schedule with these guys, they get milked once a fortnight, and then the day after they're, like I milked these guys yesterday, the day after they're milked, they get a, a, a feed like that. And, because he would have given me probably maybe 15% of his venom yields and his venom glands there. So then he has a bit of food like this, which will help him rebuild those levels of, of venom, um, give him the energy, because he's going to burn a bit of energy doing it. All right, because he's just literally producing proteins that are going to go through a bit of a wild change there and eventually turn into um, some extremely dangerous toxins. So, have a go at this. It's going to be nice and quiet. Got to be calm, Bilbo. But he's already starting to eat it. So, what he's doing is he's positioning the head perfect so he'll get that nose, so it's down his throat first. And look at that. So, he's working his teeth, his jaws, over that rat 
and that'll take him maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Right, so a lot of people think they've got, they can dislocate their, their jaw. It's not like that at all. all right. well, you imagine if you dislocated the jaw and you tried to eat, it would just be flapping around. So the bottom jaw is made of two bones like this, and there's two there so that they can open it like that, open their mouth almost 180 degrees. Their skin can stretch to like eight, nine times the size of their head. And they walk the top jaw over it, like you can see him doing right now. And then they scoop the bottom door. So walk a bit more, scoop. Walk a bit more, scoop. And then he'll gobble it all the way down. He'll curl up somewhere warm and he won't do anything for four or five days while he digests it. All right. Oh, he did the same thing. It's right here, mate. No, not the... Yeah. See what I mean? They are, no, not me. It's behind you. Sometimes they lose it and then, oh, there he's got it, right by the head. Look at that. So he did the same thing straight out, venom on the enclosure. Woo! Oh, look, he's got it almost down the hatch. Look at that. This is, for a snake, this is when they're most vulnerable. Right, if a predator came along right now, he'd have to extremely fast regurge that to defend himself. Otherwise, he's completely open to predation. Yeah, so they try and be pretty secretive. Okay. Oh, see, he's got his head hidden on the other side there in the substrate. I might flick this near him and see what he does. See how he's pushing his body against it? Sometimes these guys kill like monitor lizards um, by literally they go into a burrow and they push their body against the monitor, against the burrow wall like that, and, um, and squeeze the life out of it. All right. Boom. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Oh, straight on. All right. Now we've got to go and feed the display king ground. So I'm going to give this fella two rats if he wants them. Jim, I'll see if he, he'll take one. Oh, smashed it straight away. So yeah, I'm going to chuck a second one in there for him. And I also like the more you feed them, the bigger they get, right? And I want this fella to be a monster. He's the biggest of our king browns. Um, like, two small rats for him is prime. Like, he, he could eat a snake almost his same size if he was in the bush. The, rep, the king browns generally eat reptiles. Um, but, you know, obviously in captivity, we've got to vary their diets a little bit um, compared to wild type diets. This is a tiger snake in here. Some of the tigers are real foodie, and others are a little bit more shy. It varies so much with, with snakes. Where like lizards are feeding most days. All right, not in the cooler months obviously, but um, oh, smashed it. See that he just come out and absolutely buried his fangs into that thing. Smoked it. What's your favorite thing to do when you're not at school? Probably fishing. Fishing? Yeah, I love fishing. I'll leave that one in shed and so is that one. I generally won't feed them when they're in shed. They don't really want to eat. Um, so, yeah, there's two there on this bank that are in shed that I won't, um, so leave that guy for him. So, yeah, that's sort of a bit of a look into um, what goes on with feeding. We've got these cage cards is on all the enclosures, and so we just write down, because they feed generally twice a month, right? So, um, this guy will get down, I think today's the 15th, so he'll get a rodent right here, and then again at the end of the month, we just write down... Like this is a death adder, so he'll get a, a mouse. He's not due till next week, but yeah, he'll get a, a mouse, a circle around it, and um, it's just for us to track them. You know, they're eating when we're looking at their weights to make sure they're gaining or they're not losing anything. Um, you know, the adult snakes will sort of sort of sit pretty steady, really, when it comes to um, their weights. Thank you for the help, Mister. Um, remember, keep practicing, and in a couple more years, we'll see you. We'll see him handling. You know, like tiger snakes and king browns and getting milking going on. That's How good. does that sound? Great. Good? Yeah? yeah. All right. So Maddie and Logan are heading off now to do some other stuff with 
venom outside of here and I need to finish milking a couple of my brown snakes because um, I had a few that I missed last week because um, they're in shed. So I'm going to do them this week um, so I can follow that up. So I'm going to grab my hook. I've also got to get my pipetting gear out of the drawer there. Got a big crowd out the front here. Um, so, the pets, brown snake bottle, cha ching. Just triple check that paper. Uh, no, that's good. All right, so um, let's grab a couple of brown snakes out. All right. Um, this fella is a bit of a jumpy snake as well. I remember the first brown snake I ever caught when I was really young. It was the middle of winter, like at the moment, and I flipped a rock and he was under the rock and he was probably half this size and he was covered in black bands. And um, I, me I remember I had no idea what he was because... Um, yeah, I had one reptile book and it only had one photo of a brown snake and it didn't look like what I'd found, but it, it was so cold, the snake, because it was, it was probably like five or six degrees um, on that winter morning where I was. <laughs> I just picked him up and just had him in my hands and was looking at him and then he started to sort of wake up a bit because he would have been getting the heat from my body and I, and I thought, oh, this is actually probably something pretty dangerous. But yeah, that was my first encounter. With, oh, that's a good yield. You can see there's a big crowd out here. The biggest problem I had, the biggest challenge I had was keeping it from my parents, especially my mum. <laughs> so, mum, if you're watching this, sorry. Uh, like, you have no idea how many snakes <laughs> I had in my bedroom <laughs> when I was younger. Like, the mum would have had no idea about Because when we were little, like, I used to catch them at school. Um, and because the principal had at the primary school where I, Went to school, he hated snakes and he used to try and kill them. So I'd beat him to them, catch him, I'd put him in my backpack and I'd take him home. And then I'd jump on me pushy that afternoon and peel off to the bush somewhere and let him go. I'd literally put him like in my lunchbox in my backpack. And then I'd put him in like whatever container I had at home. I'd just jam him under my bed or um, in my cupboard somewhere. And to be honest, I think my mum was actually too scared to go looking around in my bedroom. This guy's wild, really wild. Um, and yeah, I remember as I got older, more confident catching snakes and I still remember the first like proper big brown snake I caught on the road, jumped out of the car, went flying out and grabbed him by the tail and he just went berserk. It was like a busy road and um, he was gonna get cleaned up by a car. So I jumped out and grabbed him and maybe gave me some curry um, but yeah, <laughs> it was good. But anyway, don't do what I did. All right. A little bit there, not much. We. You would have seen in that last episode. That um, I think it was the last episode that King Brown that sort of slipped off the boy <laughs> when um I was milking him. So um, yeah, like we weren't sure whether to put that in or not, but just sort of shows you, you guys at home, like, you know, what can happen um, and things can go wrong pretty quick. So thankfully though, I um, didn't wear a bite and it was all good. Ooh, I pulled away fast. I've got one more to do. Um, and he's a big, big brown snake. Is extreme caution. <laughs> okay, I've had my coffee. We eat. Come here, mate. I am um, once I was up in a place ooh, called Lakeland, sort of the bottom end of Cape York. It's probably my favourite part of the country. And I caught two big males like this combating. They were, um, and I had like a broken foot. I had no shoes on and they were punching on uh, on this farm and the workers were freaking out and these two big brown snakes, like literally like this size, were going absolutely bananas at each other. And um, 
I was worried someone was going to kill him, so I ran in and grabbed both of them by the tail, and I literally had, you know, one in one hand and another in the other hand, and, um, mate, they were going off, and I managed to get both of them into a snake bag, I don't even know how, with no shoes on, um, <laughs> in the heat of the day, and yeah, they'd been literally, because snakes, when they're combating, they, um, sort of wrestle, they wrap around each other and the sort of dominant one pushes the other one. Oh, good yield. The other one sort of pushes the less dominant one to the ground. Um, and yeah, but I got both of them into a big bag and then I let them go. And my mate's dad was with me, who is not a snake fan. But I was like, no one's gonna believe me I did this. So I, Tipped them out, grabbed them both by the tail again, and got a mad photo with um, <laughs> both of the, the snakes, which was really cool. All right, so, well, that's the last brown snake for today. So, that is gonna be it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, you know the deal, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all for the next episode.